is the right word for me, but we'll just go with it for right now. And um, let's see if I can find my documents. Why don't we totally either let's totally get rid of the uh, the pantalla yeah. there? Yeah. If I was giving me fit earlier. It's just oh, like one of my oh, classes. Yeah. It's just like my classroom. If, does your squeak like that? Yeah, uh. and I have to pull it down to get it to go up, and it's a magic trick. That, I'm so proud of myself because I haven't figured out my students went there. Yeah. 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 Yo creo por algo de, de, de la adopción. Sí. Okay. 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 So, what you're going to see is not how I start the class, and it can't be because we'd be the, the the first couple you know classes you spend going over all of the stuff that you have to cover as far as how kids come into the classroom, how they sit down, and so on and so forth. So. Um, instead of making things pretty tedious, I wanted to just show you what they see ahead of time before we actually start story creation. That makes sense. So, before we get, to, um, well, actually within the first 20 minutes of class, they'll get at least three or four of the verbs. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll practice, we'll use TPR with them, so there's a lot of movement involved. Um, hand signals, repetition, over and over again, um, so that they, they're they starting to build their vocabulary immediately. Um, so about four verbs, um, maybe using a few of these nouns at the same time to start, start combining in sentence form, so they know they're not just learning single pieces, but instead looking at full phrases, because I think people's memories tend to work better that way. And then we jump down to both basic greetings and conversation. So by the time the kids leave the very first day of school, they've got um, mira, escucha, camina, habla. And they've got um, the hola, me llamo, como te llamas, um, and como estas. And that's one that most of them know a little bit of anyway. So it's really not hard to build on that. So just building out the vocab. In reality, I'd probably have pictures for the first um, two or three weeks of feeling expressions on the board. So, esta feliz, esta triste, esta enojado, all of those words so that they're able to come up with that, generate vocabulary based on the images on the board. You said for the first few days? Yeah, for the first few days. Although, really, I mean, I show a lot into them in the first day and a half. I don't give any homework, but um, I give them quite a bit of vocab and then we just keep going over it and repeating it. Um, so they feel like they've done something by the time they leave the classroom, which is a common problem. They often think they can't. Now, this set of 50 verbs is what Blaine Ray has come up with is the most, is the highest frequently used 50 verbs um, in Spanish. Excuse me, Blaine Ray is the author of this um, and the creator of the, yes, he's yes. The, the Green Bible. Yes. And he has based it off of Stephen Krashen's right. research that you went to the conference yes. for Stephen Krashen. Great. Como se llama este señor? Blaine Ray. Como se llama este señor? Blaine Ray. Como Uh-huh. Oh, she's in your Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, great. Right. And the majority of these verbs you can use TPR with anyway. Um, and you know, I you can just take a look at them. They're things that you hear in really in daily conversations. The cool thing about this method is that it's a lot like the first 100 sight words that we give kids in grade school. If you have children, if you know little ones, the first thing we do in kindergarten is get them to memorize how to spell these first 100 sight words because they're in everything all the time. And um, you want them committed to memory through acquisition instead of just word lists because they don't stick in word lists. At least not with my students. 
quite possible yours are completely different. <laughs> Alrighty, so before I would start um, a full TPRS lesson, what we would do is practice basic conversations. We'd probably get through um, everything from de donde eres, como estas, como te llamas. Um, and adios, hola, mucho gusto, some niceties. Um, and how do you manage that? Do you give them time to, okay, now you have three minutes, and here's some, how do you manage uh, that? Actually, it's almost all teacher directed oh, okay. at the beginning. Um, so it's all rapid fire. Okay. And um, the reason I do that is that I found with my personality, and it's different from my colleagues. For my personality, if I let them to rienda suelta in the classroom, Agarrando la rienda de nuevo mm -hmm. is um, un asunto que no me gusta. Exactamente, so, estoy de acuerdo. Yeah, con eso. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, quién sabe if, if that'll change with time. I know that there are some teachers who are really good at setting up the pair activities. What I've ended up finding in my, I guess they're now 16 years of practice, is that if I set those up, unless I can be in 30 places, well, in 15 places at once, they're not doing what I've asked them to do. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the bless their hearts, fourteen-year-olds want to socialize. That's like their main goal in life. And so, if you give them the moment to do that, that's what they—that's what they're genetically predisposed to. And we, so I won't fight that. School. Yeah. <laughs> he teaches in a private school. Oh, so he has a little bit different. Same genetics, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you that my my children. Uh, go to a completely alternative kind of schooling. But when I did some TPRS with them, their recall was 100% and I only came in once a week. Um, but it's a whole different motivation with that group. So they're trained differently and they process information differently. Okay, so if it were the day before the first TPRS lesson, I would have sent you home with these vocab words. Those would be words you haven't seen before. Um, and I would have sent you home with them, and I would have asked you, please, to take a look and to know that they're coming tomorrow. Wait, you said you don't give them any homework. I don't give them homework. I have them take it home as a lesson and have them look at it. Homework, okay. in most of my students' minds, is that I'm asking them to produce a piece of paper when they come back to class. Okay, and this is more just memorizing. Yes, yeah, just take a look at these words. Make sure you're familiar with them. And I'm not going to test them the next day. I don't tell them I'm going to give them a test. So the reality is I'll have 20% look at them. Right. And 80% go, what, I have Spanish tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although we're switching to a, an everyday. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully that will change that. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I'm not sure how different it is in different schools. I've heard different amounts of information. But a lot of my, um, <clears throat> at least the colleagues in our school, especially in our lower levels, first and second year students don't do homework. That's the first night or first grade? Um, this is probably in the new, well, okay. In the AB block, it would be the middle of the second week of classes. Yeah, that will start story creation. I probably would have done um, little mini stories that we've created with KI, como se llama, de donde es, que le gusta comer, Que come, and they'll give me place names instead of <clears throat> instead of food because I let them use place names. It's a way to generate vocab and get the things to stick. Even my kids who barely pass the class can still say, "I am also say I'm a Bob, Camina Gresham, come Taco Bell." Yeah, está feliz, right? And those are kids who are getting 50 percent at the end of the year. Okay. Just to get this correct, you said you don't teach a few words like that till the middle of the second week. Well, they've got it's because they've got the other list yeah. of fifty words that yeah. we're going oh, to go over all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. We do all the other stuff first. Stories. Yeah. Does so that make sense? So yes. there's a large vocab bank. Right. Right. I'm not requiring them. To t I'm not testing them on it. They're just moving generally when I do it. So TPR. It used to be that we'd have words, in, um, words on the board when they came in at the beginning of the class period, and they'd write them down there. Um, for my kids who want 
to study, that 20%, it's not fair to them not to have them take something home so they feel right. more prepared. That's right. Um, when they were walking in and seeing four new, ver <coughs> four new words <coughs> and were asked to do something with it, the kids who really wanted to put in that time felt cheated. Mm -hmm. So I just give it to them the night before, that group looks at it, the rest of them don't care. That's right, and that's where you meet the needs of both. Trying to meet everybody's needs, yeah. which in a real mixed classroom is hard. Yeah? Um, is there any way that we could get our hands on that word bank that you... Oh, yeah. You know what? I um, stole it off Blaine Ray's, Blaine Ray's website. Awesome. Oh, okay. And he has all kinds of, of pronounced. The question words are on there. You can just download them and print them out. Um, everything is available. Okay. Yeah. And um, there's actually there's a ton of stuff you can steal off the internet for TPRS. Yes. And when you see what the textbooks look like, um, you may be more inclined to steal things off the internet than want your district to purchase the materials. If this is the way you want to go. Well, they don't give you much as a teacher. You have to recreate the wheel all the time right. anyway. So right. if there's in this economy, getting your districts to buy you anything is really tough. And it's much cheaper to buy readers than it is to buy a textbook. This can be easily recreated in many forms. <laughs> Not meaning to sound really bad, but... <laughs> okay, so... Um, and once again, this is one of those things that feels really awkward. Because if you have a native speaker in your first year class, you invite them to leave and go up to second year as quickly as possible. And the reason for that is that it's utterly painful to listen to the language done this way over and over and over again if you already know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So you'll be twitching within a few minutes. And I'm sorry about it, that's just how it goes. Um, we luckily have now three classes for um, native speakers of Spanish at various levels in our district, which because we are having a pretty decent influx of in native speakers in our school. Right, oh sorry, in our school we have three different levels of um, Spanish for native speakers, because a lot of the kids are really interested. Some of them think it's going to be an easy A, but most of them truly are curious and feel uncomfortable with a vocab set or with the writing component or don't believe they can read and don't believe that you when you say, now sweetheart, it's pretty phonetic. I bet if you gave it a go, you could do it, you know, 100% of the time. But that's all right. Makes them nervous and that's cool. So we give them the native speaker classes to practice those skills. First year Spanish is not the right place. The other thing that happens is not only do they get bored, but then you have hecklers, which isn't comfortable for you, and it'll shut up your non-native speakers because they're really stinking intimidated. <laughs> it's really scary. Okay. So, to start off, I would say, repiten por favor, el papá, el papá, el lobo, el lobo, come, no, come. No, come. Señora, come. Eso sí. Come. No, no, no. No. Come. A ver, otra vez. Come. Come. Perfecto. Y llora. 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 Muy bien. Ok. El papá. Mi papá se llama, Bill no se llama because we practice it over and over. Mi papá se llama John. ¿Cómo se llama tu papá? Pues mi papá también se llama John. ¡Qué interesante! No. Increíble. ¿Cómo se llama tu papá? Mi papá se llama Myron. Ah, Myron. Su papá se llama Myron. ¿Cómo se llama tu papá? Mi papá se llama Ernesto. Se llama Ernesto. Su papá se llama Ernesto. ¿Cómo se llama tu papá? Berto. Berto. Su papá se llama Berto. ¿Tu papá se llama Berto? Sí. Sí. Su papá se llama Berto. Ah. Hmm. Pensamos en un nombre. Hay un papá. Uh, eso no escribe. 